Hi, I'm Dave Worzall, and you're watching PHTV4 Spotlight. Today's Spotlight is taking us to Little Red Schoolhouse, and we are visiting with Maritza Rocha, who is the, make sure I get the title right here, the Nature Center Director at Little Red Schoolhouse. Thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me, Dave. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. It's good to see you again. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about you know what it's been like in the fall and, and what's coming up this winter. I know there's been some new developments, and we want to make sure we get those. Uh, maybe let's take a minute first, you know, how has it been this fall so far? I know we're still dealing with some of the COVID restrictions, but uh, I'm hoping programming's been normal. How have things been going? Yeah, Dave, everything's actually been going really, really well. We have, we're still requiring masks when you go inside the building, but right now we're outdoors. Most of our programs are taking place outside. So there are some restrictions limited, you know, to be inside, but not like before at all. So yeah, we're here. That's great. And so uh, are you seeing, uh, like, how is the visitation, especially now that you're inside again? Is it like what it was before or is it still, uh, you know, kind of tough to deal with, I guess? I'm sure. There's certain days where it does tend to get a little busier than others. And we still have to monitor, especially the inside the interpretive building um, at Little Red Schoolhouse. But um, most people, you know, they're when we have days like this, they're coming out. They're coming out. They're coming out in groups. You're bringing out the family. And we encourage that. We just make sure that we're still maintaining our, our social, physical distance. Good. Good. Okay. Well, that's nice. And it's nice to hear that uh, people are able to enjoy it that way, especially. So let's talk about, um, you know, we're, we're kind of transitioning. The fall season is winding down. We still have a little bit of fall left, but we're also heading into winter. So what kind of programming is available? Uh, what type of activities can uh, people expect to do in the Forest Reserve and also specifically at Little Red Schoolhouse? Yes. Um Currently, right now, we're going into our winter hours, which is really important. So we're closing the nature centers um, at 4 o'clock. So we're having a lot of programming outdoors still. Um, our plan B is usually to bring people inside. But um, we're having a lot of night programs as well. So look out for those. And again, there are daily updates. Check us out on our Facebook page, but also check us out on our Forest Preserve uh, page as well. F that's fpdcc.com. And you could find out updates about programs, guided hikes. Um, there is registration still. So we encourage people to please give us a call or check online to see what's going on. Okay, so as of now, it sounds like you guys have adapted really well. Um, nothing's, I would say, I know you've had special events in the past, sometimes have been either canceled or postponed. None of that is taking place, is that right? Or We're modifying. We're still doing a lot of modifications. Um, we're really listening to CDC guidelines and just reports and things like that. But uh, this year, we still did not have our huge annual art festival that we normally would have. It's been, you know, it's a, it's a tradition here at Little Red Schoolhouse with the Forest Preserves. We've been having that for over 50 years. We had to go ahead and not have that um, this year again, just because we would receive over 5,000 people to this particular event. And we want to make sure that safety is still our number one concern here at the Forest Preserves and just maintaining that social distance. Other than that, we still had other programs that we modified for example we have this saturday coming up um, national bison day so we have a bison hike we're also tapping into other partners where we're able to partner up and have other different programming and initiatives for people especially outdoors all right well a shame about the art festival five thousand people boy that, that is amazing um well hopefully you'll get it this next year coming up i have to ask though so, uh, a bison hike what does that look like because I, I don't think we have any bison here but <laughs> what does that mean what's a bison hike well you'll be surprised so come on and check us out at little red schoolhouse we actually do have uh some cutout bisons oh. for you all to check out and take some selfies but there'll be prairie hikes uh traditionally we would participate and do other hands-on programming like mud pies and things like that now it's more um what would what are in those prairies and those areas where we take the hike and sort of like envision if there was um you know like a, in particular uh, uh, uh i'm sorry a foot right the the footprint um of a bison and what we would imagine would happen there's so much biodiversity and things would happen you have living creatures just in that footprint itself so we try to reimagine that and we talk about those types of things um, for that program 
Okay, so people get a chance. Like, I, I would imagine, yes, there were bison here in our past. Not now, but other... Okay, I get it. No, I like it. I like it. It we sounds fun. I don't imagine those, those things, but um, having those guided prairie walks are really helpful because we're able to do programming on what we had in this region um, and where we're at right now, preserving it. So is that part of... A, um, a sample of the type of program we have coming up in the winter. Are there any other winter programs you want to mention? Yes, for sure. We do have a lot of things that are happening throughout the forest preserves and nature centers. Please look out for our, our urban night skies. I'm not sure if you know, but we are designated the world's largest um, urban night sky place here in Palos. So please look out, um, especially on our webpage, to see what type of night events we have. We have moonwalks that are coming up, and we have a solstice bonfire celebration we will be having that all of these programs are registration um, required so please make sure that you give us a call or check on the website um, and those are just to name a few of them that we have here at little red schoolhouse but as i mentioned we have five other nature centers that are located throughout the cook county area and they also will be having different types of programs that involve winter where it's uh you know hikes where you have um, different types of of, uh, of of guided walks again outdoors okay good no it sounds like fun a lot to look forward to I, I'm going to ask and I probably should have earlier the, the urban uh, uh, night sky designation is that what you said yes, you know, nice what does that mean like how do you get that what does that actually mean sure it's a it's a partnership um, that was developed with uh, with Palos preserves also with the Adler Planetarium, um, Little Red Schoolhouse, the Forest Preserves of Cook County, of course. And we are designated now an urban night sky place where you could come out and check out just the night skies. Um, we do have a lot of different interpretive programming that's involved with that so we can inform people, educate people about urban night sky, light pollution, and things like that. Um, for us right now, uh, this is our first year. So we are encouraging, once again, people to check out our website, fpdcc.com, and you will have different types of information of when those programs start, how late can you stay. There are also permits available for a group of people. So if you want to come out with a group of people that want to check out the night sky, please check us out on our, on our webpage again, and you can get a permit and bring people on out. That sounds great, uh, and it sounds like a lot of good things going on, a lot to look forward to. Um, so you've talked about, you know, the programs, the activities, and, and other, uh, you know, other, the other nature centers. There was also, uh, you mentioned earlier, I want to make sure we talk about this, uh, a mobile app that people can access. Uh, and it, there's obviously trails all throughout the area that are really exciting to access. What is the app and how might it help somebody? Yes, of course. So we have over 350 plus trails for you to explore. Um, and those are open to the public year round. We obviously do close, you know, dust to dawn, so make sure that you, you, you keep an eye on that. But you can access some of our maps right on your hand. So you can go to map.fpdcc.com, and that's map forest preserves of cook county.com and you can access maps in the palm of your hand and check out you know how long your hike is going to be how long you want to run or if you want to take a group of, of again your friends or your family kind of want to gauge that mm -hmm. so you can have that now in the palm of your hand and you could pull up a map and know you know the exact location the distance and time yourself no, that sounds exciting. I mean, as somebody who, like, I love hiking the trails out here, to be able to have maybe a map of them sometimes, especially when you're checking out a trail that you don't normally do or, or is new to you. Um, we also talked, uh, Camp Sagawa is not far from us here, and I, I want to ask, they had, I know they have cross-country skiing trails there in addition. Is that something that will be happening this winter, do you know? It sure will, Dave. Um, again, please make sure that you guys check out our websites and you will be prompted to different nature centers and you can go ahead and register. But yes, cross-country skiing is back on. We're really happy to announce that a lot of our winter programs um, are happening this year and we're just waiting for everyone to come and take advantage of that experience with us. That sounds great. And how about you guys have a fire pit. Will the fire pit be going this winter? Yes, um, last year we had that going as warming stations. It was really popular because people just, you know, they like the smell of the smoke. So we will be having that on particular uh, days, especially when it starts getting a little bit more chillier. Um, so do look out for those fire pits, you know, come on down with their family, you know, and um, 
I'm not sure if we'll be doing any roasting of marshmallows quite yet, but you'll definitely be able to feel the heat. Good, that's great. Uh, so I, I think we got a good back. Are there any other things you need to touch on or mention about if somebody's coming to the Forest Reserve this week, next month? Checking out the website, obviously a great idea. The, and that way they can get a whole list of what programs or activities, what's happening, what not at any other time. Any other things you want to mention for us? Um, just when you all come out here, please take a look at the overlook over here at Little Red Schoolhouse and you'll notice a lot of the restoration efforts that have happened within these past two, two years, especially with, you know, um, you know, COVID, us being inside. We had the opportunity to get a lot of volunteers, school groups and work outside, including my staff here at Little Red Schoolhouse. And we were able to restore a lot of um, the, the shoreline, white oak, black, black oak. So you'll be able to see a lot of the shoreline. And we've actually had a lot of our animals that we might have not seen in a really long time. We're tracking them. Right now we have a swan out there. And uh, he or she has been out there since late summer. And we actually had not had a swan here since 1981 recorded. So it's a really big deal. Um, but come check out the areas and please feel free to volunteer uh, for any of our restoration programs that we have. You know, get involved with us and, and continue visiting us. No, that sounds great. Yeah, volunteer for the Forest Reserve. That sounds wonderful. It's nice that you're able to do the restoration thing. Um, and, and like you said, bring some of the wildlife that maybe we haven't seen in a while, bring them back. Uh, that all sounds wonderful. Thank you, Maritza. It's, it's great. Anything else you want to add before I sign off here? Oh, thank you so much for the opportunity, Dave. It's always great to see you. It's good to see you too, and I yeah I love this area, and, and you do a great job, uh, you know, getting us up to date on things. So thank you very much, Marisa. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dave Wurzel. You've been watching PHTV4 Spotlight. We've been visiting the Little Red Schoolhouse in Nature Center in uh, Cook County Forest Reserve. Thank you for watching, and happy hiking.